You guys know that I'm keeping you posted with what's happening with the condo crisis, particularly as it pertains to what's happening here in Florida. Now, don't get me wrong, HOA fees are skyrocketing across the entire country. But here in Florida, we have a unique set of circumstances that brings us a whole new set of problems that we have to deal with. In 2025, all buildings are gonna be required to carry full reserves, which many of them don't right now. And that begs the question is, how many of these buildings are actually solvent? How many of them are actually gonna be able to continue operating <laughs> without going bankrupt essentially when these new laws kick in in about nine months from now? Well, nobody knows the answer to that question, but we can start to see that more and more uh, buildings are starting to give up the fight before it's too late. Because in 2023, we saw 18 condo buyouts between Miami-Dade and Broward County, which is the highest level that's re that was recorded since 2019 when 23 condo buyouts happened then. So it's definitely not a record high, but it's starting to inch back up. And basically you get a condo buyout when 80% or more of the owners of the building decide to sell their unit to the developer, which then the developer can take full control of the building and terminate the condo and try to get out the remaining 20% or so of people that maybe didn't want to do it. Peter Zielinski, he is the owner and founder of the real estate firm here in South Florida called Condo Vultures. I actually kind of know Peter a little bit. He used to be my neighbor in a building that I used to live in. So I used to see him once in a while. And I remember he was actually in a Michael Moore movie that kind of documented the whole 2008 housing crash that we had back then. So this guy's been around the block in real estate for a long time. And he thinks that this year, South Florida is going to see about 35 condo buyouts in 2024. Now think about that, guys. We saw 19 of them in 2023. 34 is getting close to double because more and more people want out of these buildings that are basically insolvent. And there's no doubt that the collapse of the Champlain Towers has brought this whole thing on. Like, it absolutely did. Um, before that, buildings were kind of able to just get away with, you know, running on a shoestring budget. And then when something comes up, they kind of just put a Band-Aid on it and, you know, pass a, a special assessment, fix it, and wait for something like that to happen again. But those days are over. Now, buildings are gonna have to start operating like a real business and they're gonna be forced to have cash and reserves at all times. And Peter thinks that a lot of people are gonna give up at the last minute. You know, once we get closer to the end of 2024, to closer to the point where these regulations are gonna kick in, you're gonna see more buildings just give up and say, yeah, please buy us out because we're not gonna be able to afford any of this. But to make matters worse, right now, to go through a condo buyout could be even more difficult than pre-pandemic. Why is that? Because of the high interest rates. Remember, even big firms that buy out these condos and redevelop them, big developers, guess what they use to make this happen, guys? Debt and all forms of debt right now are more expensive. So at a time when we kind of need these condo buyouts the most is when we're most likely to see them get pulled back on because a lot of these companies maybe can't see making a profit at the current price of debt. And to make matters worse is even if they can get the funding to perform a lot of these condo buyouts, a lot of banks are pulling back on commercial lending because they're required to make sure that they're not overexposed to any type of asset. After the bank failures we saw about a year ago, these lenders are being forced to cut back on lending, specifically with commercial real estate right now too, because of how much commercial real estate is in the tank. And so for any bank to give a loan right now to somebody wanting to buy out a condo and redevelop it is an extremely risky loan. And the timing just couldn't be worse for all of this. It's basically the perfect storm for condos right now. But just down here in my neck of the woods alone, okay, there's been 21 condo buyouts in the Miami area, not including Miami Beach where I live. In Miami Beach alone, there was 13. Bay Harbor Island saw eight, and Fort Lauderdale also had another eight. Now, like I've mentioned here on the channel before, I'm all for 
getting rid of an old building that hasn't been maintained and is not up to the latest building codes and is flat out dangerous to live in. I think that these condo terminations are a good thing from that point of view. But just like everything else today, there's nothing built for the average person, guys. When you see these condo terminations take place, they go ahead and replace it. You know, a building that maybe had 100 units before and each unit maybe costs like three, four hundred thousand dollars that gets replaced with the building that has, you know, 200 units and the starting price tag is 800,000, you know, so, and that's cheap still. Like most of the condos I see that are going up in Miami Beach where I live is totally insane. Like the starting price tag is usually four million dollars and up these days. But like I said earlier guys, this is not just a Florida problem, okay? Because a lot of other places are seeing condo fees and the cost to maintain these buildings completely skyrocket because it's not a unique thing that here in Florida that people did not keep up with the maintenance, you know? Condos were kind of looked at this thing for the longest time. You know, you've seen a huge boom of condos being built back in like the late 70s and 80s and people bought them they were cheap the hoa fees were cheap and everybody thought they could just live in these places forever and have to do nothing that was like the whole reason people bought condos right it's inexpensive and i don't have to do any work well the problem is if no one does any work then the place goes unmaintained and so you're starting to see condo buyouts start to happen in other places too like in illinois virginia new york maryland and arizona are all places where condo buyouts are starting to ramp up. And this is basically happening built in buildings where they're like 40, 50 years old. They haven't done any work, guys. And that's what I'm seeing here as well. Almost all the condo terminations and the uh, buyouts and the redevelopments that I've seen in my neighborhood where I live were either a vacant piece of land to begin with or was a very old building that they just didn't keep up with. But the reason that Florida leads the way is because we had this new set of condo laws that are gonna go into effect in 2025, but also people's HOA fees have completely gone insane just due to the insurance costs alone. You know, many people are seeing their HOA fees double or triple just from that, never mind inflation and the effect that has on payrolls and utility costs for the building. I mean, I would probably even take the money and run too if it was offered to me. You know, if I got offered over market value for my place and they wanted to buy it out, I'd say, okay, sure, I'll take the money and go do something else with it. And I also think that this is gonna cause condo prices to take a massive hit because we're already starting to see the amount of listings of condos go up because of this and you're likely to continue seeing this happen so anybody who's out there looking for a good deal on a condo those deals could be coming very soon but you have to really fully understand what you're getting yourself into guys like if you see a deal that's too good to be true it very likely probably is because that building is probably going to have major financial issues and you need to look into this before you purchase a condo. I don't care if it's in Florida or any other state. That is true anywhere. When I was in California last time, I saw a condo in Sausalito, guys. There was only like 45 units there and out of those 45 units, 30 of them were not paying the HOA fees. They were more than 60 days behind and delinquent, not paying. And the building's budget was completely underwater, okay? They were projected to be in the red for the next three to five years minimum. And guess what's gonna happen to their HOA fees and special assessments over there? You know it, it's gonna go up. But it looks like that these higher HOA fees and insurance prices are probably just gonna cause downward pressure on home prices here in Florida regardless, guys. Uh, one of my friends, Ben, sent me this story talking about how you're already starting to see this happen. And right now, if you look at the latest Zillow data, okay, there's about 205,000 listings in Florida, which includes single family and multifamily homes, apartments, condos, townhouses, everything, right? And out of those homes, over 50,000 of them have a price cut right now. That's 25% of listings throughout the entire state have a price cut. And I'm seeing some real estate agents, especially on YouTube, making videos saying, well, you know, there's nothing to worry about with the inventory skyrocketing here in Florida because all that's happening is the inventory levels are going back to normal uh, where they were pre-pandemic. So on the one hand, that is true. 
that the listings are coming back to pre-pandemic levels. Well, you know what's not coming back to pre-pandemic levels? The amount of sales, the amount of closed sales. How many of these places that are actually selling? Okay, that's not coming back. And right now it's at normal levels. But if the inventory keeps going up and the amount of sales keeps going down, well, you don't have to be a genius to figure out where it goes from there, guys. Right now, what we're seeing in many parts of the state is prices going down. You're seeing listings with a lot of price cuts. You're seeing inventory going up and you're seeing the amount of closed sales stay low. So I don't know. To me, that sounds like a recipe for home prices going down in the near future. I even saw a video recently from Ryan Scribner. He did a really good job on this video and he was showing numerous examples of homes in the Port Charlotte area and Northport and that whole area. You have houses over there, guys, that people paid more for it two or three years ago and they're dropping the price now below what they're, they paid for it then just to get out of the house. And this area had massive hurricane damage. They probably can't afford to fix these houses and the insurance on these houses are probably skyrocketed. Maybe they're even uninsurable at this point. So who's gonna buy those houses? And how much do you think they're actually gonna sell for? They're gonna trade for pennies on the dollar. Now, obviously, all of Florida did not get rocked by Hurricane Ian and not every market is seeing that level of distress but that's just an example of how this starts. And on top of that, they're building all these new properties in, in the Southwest Florida area. So they're gonna be leading the way in the Florida housing crash, no doubt. They already are, in my opinion. But condo prices are already starting to come down. In Miami, we've seen a 2.5% uh, drop in condo prices recently. Jacksonville is a 6.5% decline. And Orlando, it's a 4.8% decline year over year in prices right now. I don't know who's coming up with some of these numbers because they put this figure in this story. Listen to this. It says, according to the website, Florida Realty Marketplace, average HOA fees typically range between $1,000 and $350 in Florida, depending on maintenance requirements and community amenities. Like that is way below anything you're going to find around here in Miami, guys. I can't speak for the rest of Florida, but I would imagine even like cheaper areas of Florida right now, if you're buying a condo, you're going to be looking at at least three, three to $400 a month on the higher end of this estimate, okay? And in Miami, forget it. Even just a small studio or a one-bedroom condo right now, you're looking at minimum six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 a month in HOA fees. So I think you're going to see a couple things happen. You're going to see a lot of people being desperate to get out and try to sell. And at the same time, you're going to see more condo terminations as people also get desperate and look for a way out. And it doesn't help that Florida now has the record of the highest insurance premiums in the nation. As of 2023, the average Florida homeowner is paying $6,000 in homeowner's insurance, guys. So that's the other thing too. If you think that you're going to just run away from a condo and move to a house and that's going to save you a ton of money, think again. Unless you're moving from a very expensive area like Miami where I live and moving to a cheaper area of Florida where you can buy a house for a fraction of what your condo costs, then yeah, you can save money. But if you're just like in Miami selling a condo and you think you're going to move to Coral Gables or Coconut Grove or even Kendall for that, that matter and save money on a house, it's not going to happen. Just your insurance costs alone are going to be astronomical. People are paying upwards of $9,000 a year here in many cases or sometimes more for just an average house to get insurance on it now. And there's other problems with houses too. You think you're going to run to a house and that's going to be better? Well, maybe not because guess what happens with houses? You get flooding, okay? That's why so many of these houses on, in Southwest Florida are seeing these massive price cuts because the water was up to like my chest in, in some of these areas, guys. It's a ridiculous amount of damage that was done from the past hurricane. And if a water comes sweeping through a neighborhood like this, you know, all of these houses get an extreme amount of damage. And before people were kind of able to hide that. Well, not anymore because they just changed that. They just passed a law here in Florida where they have to now disclose if the house has ever had flood damage before. And it's what this is aimed at doing is it's supposed to uh, disclose to potential home buyers the potential risks 
of flood damage in the neighborhood you're buying in. It also makes it so that buyers are able to find out if the property has any flood insurance claims or received any federal aid for flood damage in the past. So this is really gonna open up some transparency knowing whether or not you're buying a house that could be underwater. Although there are a couple things missing from this new law, Although there are a couple things missing from this new law, and those things are whether or not there was ever a flood insurance policy on the house in the past. I wouldn't be worried too much about the flood insurance policy side of things because if you're financing the house, your mortgage is gonna take care of that, guys. They're gonna know if there was a, a flood insurance policy on the house prior to you owning it, and if there was, they're gonna force you to have one too. But to me, there's just all this downward pressure on prices from, from every different angle right now with rising HOA fees, with rising insurance costs, this new flood disclosure. I mean, what do you think that's gonna do to home prices, guys? Once, once this kicks in, in July, I think this year, if you live in an area that's flooded before and that's on the disclosure, how many people are gonna be willing to buy that house? And if they are, are they still gonna be willing to pay the price that you were asking before they knew that? So. <laughs> And I just think there's way too many things out there that are making real estate look like still the best investment ever. Like I saw a story today about how the most recent report from Adams Data, they released their single family rental market report, okay, between 2023 and 2024. And for a median three bedroom home, rents increase more than median single family home prices in 63% of the markets that they analyzed. And they're saying, well, this, is, this means that investors are making profits because the rent prices are going up faster than the home prices. Well, not necessarily, because let's take a look at what, some, what they're saying here, guys. Their formula is this. They look at the anticipated average annual gross rental yield for three bedroom properties calculated by dividing the annualized gross rent income by the median purchase price across 341 counties. And that number is expected to reach 7.55% in 2024, which is a slight increase from last year's average of 7.39%. So that means the average investor, even if these numbers are correct, let's say, has about a seven and a half percent profit per year cap rate on the house, right? If this is true, but that's only based on the purchase price of the house. That's it. They're not factoring in anything else. What costs are missing? Oh, let me tell you as somebody who was a landlord, they're missing vacancy costs. They're missing repair costs. They're missing utility costs. They're missing the big kahuna, which is homeowner's insurance. They're missing property taxes. And both property taxes and homeowner's insurance are considerably more expensive when it's a rental property versus if it's a homesteaded property that you live in. So my question is, at the end of the day, are these people who own these residential rental properties really turning a profit? Well, maybe, to me, it depends on how long ago they bought them. Anybody who bought a rental property in the last few years is probably upside down on that property at this point, guys. But even if you bought a property a long time ago, the cost could have gone up so much by now that it's still not profitable. And these data firms like Adam don't take into consideration any of these additional expenses, which are a massive chunk of a landlord's monthly budget. You can't just sit there and divide the purchase price of the homes by how much uh, people are getting in rent and say that's the average return, guys, because that doesn't even tell you close to what the, re the picture of reality really is. But my concern is people read stories like this because it's from a trusted source like Adam's data. They, they put out very good foreclosure data. I will give them that. Okay, they're more on top of it than anybody else, it seems like. Every time I cite foreclosure data, it's from them. But on this, they're just way off. But the problem is, people see stories like this, and they see the data, and they're like, oh, well, I guess getting into being a landlord is still profitable. You know, I can still make a 7.5% return every year based on what this is saying. And listen, they tell you some places across the country that are supposedly doing way better than that, right? You got even some cities in Florida, they say in Indian River County, people are making an annual 14.6% return. St. Louis, Missouri, 14.6% return. Uh, Richmond, Georgia, 12.7% return. Montgomery, Alabama, 12.2% return. Yeah, before any expenses, guys, before all the things I just mentioned. How much do you think that return shrinks down to once you pay 
for having a vacant property. Once you pay for turnover, when somebody moves out and you got to spend three, four thousand dollars to get the place ready for the next tenant and you have a problem, something breaks down and your property insurance just doubled just like everybody else's did. How much profit's really left at the end of the day after all of that? So I'm not saying anybody who, does, who wants to invest in real estate shouldn't do it, but I am saying that you should have a very clear idea of how much these expenses are for you when you're looking at any individual property because you might be surprised to find out that the profit margins and the returns aren't anywhere near as high as you think they are. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.